And we could go over to 250. 250. And 250. Let's move it up so we can get a better view on it again. Four hundred and thirty nine point nine nine five. It has problems with that one. Four thirty nine point nine nine seven. There is a reason that they've put these weird four hundred and forty one point nine eight nine. Four forty one point nine nine zero. Yeah, there is a reason they do these these uh frequencies. So you guys have a hard time counting it and figuring it out. In fact, let's let's try to auto. I know it was already set right, but 442, 438, 442. Seems to be jumped around too much there. It really does. Um, Like I said, there was a reason they put these in there. 443.0170. 443.018. We expect it rounded up. And, yep, still have problems with that one. Okay. Of course, when you get to like, I don't know, 1000 kilohertz, and bang on. And, uh, pretty close to bang on. Maybe this probes all this. Nope, it's not. It might be picking up some mirror fan somewhere. Let me pull my oscilloscope out. Yeah, so the counter's having a little bit of problems in some of the ranges, but all in all, like I said, it's still a really, for a unit this old, it's a really nice unit. Ah, there we go, frequency. Now we got it. I was giving it more of a wave signal to read. Apparently it wanted less. Okay. Let's see if we can find one of those word frequencies again. Or am I going to have to jump all the way around? 153.8462 kilohertz. Hmm, that's not anywhere near, but let's adjust the time. Hundred and fifty four. So, yeah, you pretty much got right on. Hundred fifty three point eight four six kilohertz, exactly what I would expect from the Rigel with a much higher capture rate. All right, so weird frequencies or not, seems to be doing okay. Four three nine 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 five six. Four three nine 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 seven. Let me adjust this out. Uh, same thing here. Uh, I'm still getting used to this scope, actually. That was definitely the wrong way. I thought I was going the right way. Four thirty-eight. Okay. I'll take it. Four forty-one point nine eight nine zero. Four forty-one point nine nine zero. Four thirty-eight. Is it still four thirty-eight? Should be like four four two. Ah, uh, seems to be having a problem with that one. But let's go to one thousand hertz. Yeah, we're good there. Next, two point five kilohertz. We're good there. Five. Of course, you know the answer. We're good there. Oops. Just dial, dial the 
hit the wrong button, the dial there. 10, 50, 50 kilohertz, yep, looks good. Let's move it up. We're out. Let's see if we can pick it up. Now, that is identical to what this unit does for a 2 megahertz signal out. So that's exactly what I expect to see. And that is exactly what it's showing me. Is that really, really bad waveform? So, no surprise there. And it does pick it up as 2.01 megahertz. So, happy with that. Because I, this is a horrible signal for 2 megahertz. I can tell you that right now. It really is. The fact that it even shows it on any of my scopes. Because this, the next one is 1000 megahertz. And yeah, none of them will pick it up. This one kind of does. It just bounces up and down. Let's see what other it does on this. Of course, this is only a 60 megahertz unit. So, of course, it's not going to see anything. And if it does, I will be shocked. It's getting that same bounce. Basically the same thing that this one's done. And this, this is why it's messed up. Is pretty much nothing to do with the scopes. This is all cheap signal generator. All I could afford kind of thing. <laughs> but it, I mean, it is nice all the end. It's even got its own frequency counter, test components, uh, confirms diodes, ESR. For, um, ah, yeah, pulse width modulation. I actually forgot to check that. I would highly doubt if Fluke messed up PWM, but to be fair, I have not checked it, so I should probably check it. Uh, let me see. Hold save. Da 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 da. Measure menu. More measures. Next page, next page, next page, next page. Pulse width, duty cycle, plus meter. Select item, yes, change modes. Probe input A, one to one. No, no, I'm not on a one to one. Hmm. Okay, I need to be on a one to one, not a 10 to one. I could change it in the software, the probe, but I really don't feel like doing that right now. So let's just go ahead and disconnect the probe and we'll steal this off my pico meter. And now, now we can be one to one as soon as I grab a, uh, a probe. Here we go. I believe I grabbed the red one. All right. We'll put the common in here. Is this going to work? I really don't know. It says it's 20% duty cycle right now. It is seeing. Yeah, it is seeing it. Okay. Guess we should change it a little bit. 30, 40, let's go right to 50. 49.9. Ah, uh, negative? Really? I got these things up backwards? Oh well, doesn't matter. And of course I have my waveform down here, auto ranging here. Pretty nice, I, I like it. Um, if I check the frequency, uh, See what the frequency is on that. So duty cycle is 49.9 at 7.81 kilohertz. Let's go little steps up at a time here now. 58. Oh, I'm showing the negative. 58 would be 42. That would be right. Okay, so we want to actually measure. I measured the wrong one. To go with this little unit. I measured the wrong one anyway. There we go, 58. There it is. This shows the negative apparently. Alright. 
60. Looks good. So now it's like, not only do I have a dual screen now showing me my duty cycle and my frequency, I also have my voltage here, DC voltage, and a waveform. I really like this thing for being so old. It's got, you got four things going on here at the same time. That's awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and just jump it up to 80, as I expected. You can see the lengths in between each positive of the square wave getting longer. 90 and we'll 91, 1%. Now we really got any kind of wave going on there. 10. Oh, it is 11. So I'll have to put that one. I hit the button one too many times there. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Nice. Really nice. 27, 37, 47. Okay. Well, the good news is, oh, I turned it back on to 10. The good news is this uh, little unit has passed every test I've thrown at it. I've measured two diodes, I've measured three diodes, I've measured anywhere from one ohm to 10 mega ohm resistors, my usual resistor test set that I have that I kind of do on it. Um, and it's, it's done really good. Millivolts, it's done really good. because it's not really a meter to kind of do current. It doesn't have a, any fuses on this thing. It doesn't have any shunt on this thing or anything like that. Um, what I prefer to do is just use something like this, uh, an external Agilent shunt, you know, which will do uh, 15 amps continuous and 30 amps for up to 15, 15 minutes, maximum of 60 volt DC max or 30 volt AC RMS. And with this, you can actually just tell to use the millivolt and the common as an accessory and then you can actually tell it what the attenuation should be what the figure should be you know one one millivolt per one amp and it'll actually figure it out for you it did a really nice job So I'd rather use this external shunt anyway for something like this because after all it is a scope. You're not supposed to be throwing current directly in scope. This one doesn't allow it. Why should that one allow it, right? So I've checked it against my Fluke 289, my Bryman, uh, which one is this? Uh, BM235. Um, everything has been great. But yeah, it's been great. I, I, I don't know what to say. I've checked it against my 34401A. It was awesome. So thanks for watching.